question. How important was that late goal to see Borger score that? Yeah, that was big. I mean, it's an extra goal, obviously, and, uh, you know, a win, any way you, you hash it out would have been good, but uh, a win by two goal, a two goal margin puts us in a good spot. But we know how explosive and dangerous that Dallas are and what they're capable of. Uh, so we'll stay very humble and grounded and we'll get back to work and prepare uh, for this next game and we need to be very mature in how we manage this next game tactically and mentally. Uh, but I thought our guys uh, really showed a lot of composure uh, after giving up the goal. Um, you know, we've made a lot of progress from 2013. And the biggest, for me, the biggest thing you've seen is just more seasoning, more experience, more maturity. Um, you know, if you remember that 2013 series with RSL in the first leg, we scored a first goal and then we gave up four unanswered. And, uh, you know, this was a much different story. And uh, I think ultimately that's what's going to carry us hopefully to the cup is that maturity and experience. First half was pretty electric. I mean, we know their team is um, explosive. I thought we looked even more explosive. Um, that's exciting. Um, can't say enough about the guys. You know, they're, they're the ones doing it. That's seven games now. Uh, and like you said, I think we're still still another level in there. Did you expect, I mean, you said you'd be happy you know, with a one nothing win or even yeah. scoreless to not give away that. <laughs> Did you expect to come out flying like that? We, yeah. I mean, you know, we talked about pragmatism. Or you guys did, but that was never going to be what we were going to do. So we we came out aggressively. That was always going to be the plan to come out and press and attack. Um, but I also I knew we could do that because of how organized we are in the back. Um, so that didn't worry me to have that approach. And we felt that we needed to capitalize on our home game, you know, and score goals, and uh, we did. Yeah, he's settling in. You know, he's figuring it out, and um, you know, the more a player settles in, figures it out, and and understands <clears throat> his role, um, understands his teammates, understands his, his coach, starts to trust everybody. Uh, they play better, and I think you're you're seeing that in in uh, Spria. He was great today. It seemed like this was a night where your depth was tested, but it seemed like all those guys, whether it was Spria or Milano, Juice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> we're a team. You know, it's the first thing I always say to uh, you know my, my club when I take over a team is it's not first team, second team, it's one team, and uh, you know, I'm, I need all of you. And uh, that's been the case this year. And uh, you know, you see when guys come in the game for us, um, whether it's off the bench or whether it's starting when they haven't been starting. Um, you know, they always look hungry, they always look bought in, and that's because we, you know, we really uh, follow through with that uh, idea of, you know, we're a team. Not 1 through 11, but, you know, 1 through 20. You gave Nagy the keys of the 10 tonight. Uh, you called him one of the best eights in the league after the second leg in Vancouver. What do you do with him going forward? <laughs> that's pretty easy. Just play him and stay out of the way. <laughs> I thought it was it was unbelievable tonight. I mean, you know, he didn't score, but the amount of times he got out of pressure, and he was always a threat, always. And, uh, you know, it's exciting to see. With the way Nagby and uh, this pre play like today and Valeri and Wallace coming in for the second leg, how do you approach the game? How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, like we, we'll approach it like we do every game, you know. Uh, we'll take some time to think about it, and, you know, we know now we have uh, Rodney and Valeria back in, and you know we got to factor in the result, this result, and uh, we got to come up with a plan, just like we do every game. Um, you know they'll they'll make some adjustments, we'll make some adjustments. We've got a few new pieces, um, so you know we'll 
we'll sit down uh, together in the war room, my staff and, and I, and we'll figure it out. What exactly happened to Ripple and uh, is he okay? Uh, his calf. He had a little tight calf actually uh, happened a couple days ago. Um, but, uh, you know, felt good before, so uh, I think it just got a little bit uh, flared up. Do you think it's something that will be calmed down by next week? I, I don't know, honestly. I have no idea. Hope so. Uh, I would expect so. You know, he's had a little bit of some calf issues from time. It's usually, I don't know if this one is, but I, it's, it's usually been on the uh, broken leg that he's had. Um, so he said he's, ever since he had that broken leg, every once in a while he'll get a little bit of tightness in that, in that calf. So uh, <clears throat> we'll see. You know, he hasn't really missed games because of it, but he's been tight before. So he's pretty good at managing it. And I know my medical team will, will hopefully have him ready next week. But we also know Paparato, sorry, we also know Paparato can, can go in and do a job, you know, which he did tonight, you know, and he set up the third goal with that, with that header on the set piece. So we don't, we don't lose much even if Paparato has to go in. It's going to be hard to take the aggregate those corners, huh? Yeah, it was good, you know, and <clears throat> this time of year, a lot of times uh, results come down to set pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, we worked a lot on set pieces, and we had seen some things on film that um, some areas where we thought we could uh, exploit and uh, I thought the execution on set pieces was uh, was tremendous and um, you know credit goes to my staff on that because I kind of throw those things to them and they've done a nice job with the set pieces this year. What were your thoughts when you saw that goal from Espria? I gotta watch it again to be honest with you. Um, it was a great goal obviously you know he hit it and you know was it uh, uh, was it fortunate? Maybe, um, but great goal. You know, he got a hold of it. He's capable of that. You know, he can he can really hit a heavy ball. Um, sometimes it's not always the most accurate or precise. But uh, I've seen him in training get a hold of a of that type of shot before. Um, so fortunately, it came at a good time. You talked about the, how aggressive you guys were to start. Yeah. I mean, is that just because you were playing at home and you wanted to push the issue, or did you see something about the way Dallas defense and transition that maybe you would be better Yeah, I mean, I don't want to divulge too much on, because we still got another game against them next series, and you know, but we, we had a we had a clear plan of how we were going to approach them, and a part of that was predicated on who we had healthy, but and we started uh, figuring out how we we're going to approach the game. You know, we we wanted to set. Um, set our team up in a way where we had good protection from our holding mids uh, with Jack. That's why we went with Jack and, and Chara, two holding mids, because we felt we needed that extra cover uh, when the ball got wide to Castillo and Barrios. Um, and also because we knew we had Espria and Milano, uh, having that protection for them allowed them to play a little bit more aggressively like a true three front. Um, so we had those guys play higher and try to get at and lock in um, and get in 1v1 battles with Hollingshead and, and uh, Watson. Um, and I thought those two guys did a good job of, of creating uh, on the flanks. So it was a little bit different setup for us, but you know, we felt it fit the players in the game. And it also fit playing Dallas because they're a team that if you don't get an extra number covered over sometimes on the flanks, if they're in 1v1 or even at times uh, you know, 2v1s, um, you know, Castillo can carve up three, four guys. So, Having that double pivot to be able to slide out, we felt in this game, um, made sense. Obviously, you Last one, please, sir. bring Nat and uh, Liam in to score lots of goals, but um, they were able to get those two goals through night, and they've been really strong for you guys on defense all season. Why do you think they've been able to bring so much to the team, both as a pair on defense and even an offense in They, You know, they're uh, battle-tested. They're experienced. You know, and we, we did feel going into this series that that would be a, a strength of ours. Um, you know, listen, Dallas is explosive. They're youthful and um, they're exciting. But, uh, you know, we put in a few uh, Grizzly vets in and I uh, thought Jack, I uh, thought Liam, I thought uh, Borchers, those three guys kind of in the, you know, back part of our team really did a nice job versus Dallas. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir.